This video will introduce you to the updated 2.1 version of the Patch Manager software. This software allows you to back up your patches, move patches freely between different banks, create banks of your own, as well as importing banks that come from third parties. Let's begin by getting the software. Go to www.ashensoundmachines.com and navigate to the Downloads page. From here, you can download the latest Patch Manager software, as well as things like owner's manuals, firmware updates, patch banks, etc. Check to make sure you have the latest 2.0 firmware running on your Hydrosynth as well. Download and install the Patch Manager software on your Mac or PC computer. Once you have the Hydrosynth Manager installed, connect your Hydrosynth to the computer via USB. Do not connect any hubs if you can avoid it, as there's no way to know if your hub will create any data transfer issues. Now that you have the Hydrosynth connected, open the Patch Manager software. It should automatically detect the Hydrosynth that is connected and show the icon in the top center of the screen. If it does not connect automatically, then click on the text that says Connect. You will open a screen where you can select the Hydrosynth MIDI in and out. In this case, I have a Hydrosynth Deluxe connected. Once you have done this, it should show your Hydrosynth model in the Connect icon bar. I'll give you some theory of operation info here. Later in the video, I'll have some use case examples. The patch manager allows you to move and copy and rename patches. The banks can be banks on your computer by clicking on the computer icon, or they can be banks in the Hydrosynth itself by clicking on the Hydrosynth icon. So first I'll say that people make this a little more difficult than it actually is. You have two pools of data here, and they can be data from the Hydrosynth itself by clicking on the Synth icon, picking from the banks within the Hydrosynth, or it can be computer where you can pick out different packs, either the factory banks. All of the factory banks will be loaded when you install the software, so there's never any fear of losing your factory presets. Or your user banks, where you can pick and choose from them. You can move things within a single bank in a single window. Or you can move things between both windows by dragging left to right. Or right to left. The windows are just data pools that you can access freely. There's no directional logic. You can go one way or the other. You can go from computer to computer, from computer to Hydrosynth, from Hydrosynth to computer, whichever way. The fastest and easiest way to work is always going from computer bank to a computer bank. Anytime you can manage data this way, you'll be saving time. If you're looking to make a bank of your favorite patches or reorganize a bank or rename patches, we suggest you do it from the computer bank to computer bank if possible. When doing operations in the computer banks, edits and moves take place very quickly, almost instantaneously. If I want to drag things from one side to the other, it just happens. I'm going from one user bank here to another user bank here. And I can change position and places. I can rename patches. And it all happens almost instantly. When doing operations on the Hydrosynth itself, any movements are going to be slower because it has to write the flash memory. So if I drag a patch into a Hydrosynth bank, you'll see that the Hydrosynth is writing the flash memory. So it takes a little bit longer. When you're doing a single patch, it's not a big deal. But when you start doing a bunch of patches, then it does get longer. Same thing with renaming patches. Yes, you can do it here, but you're going to have to wait for it to write flash every time. It's easier to rename the patches you want in the computer bank, select them all, and drag them all over and let them all transfer at one time. Menu bar functions. Most of the menu bar functions are self explanatory, like window size, rename a patch, cut. Copy, paste, delete. If you've ever used a computer, you probably understand these functions. Again, these functions are best used on files in the computer rather than in the Hydrosynth directly. 
as the time to write the flash on every patch can get long. Create Bank and Create Multi Banks. These buttons will allow you to create a new empty bank on your computer. When you click on either one of these, it's going to bring up a display dialog. You can create the bank name, say My Great New Bank. We create it. And now it's going to be in the computer. So if I go to my computer, select my user files, there's my great new bank. What a beautiful bank that is. The same is true for multis, but multis can only be done on the Hydrosynth Deluxe. The Import Bank button will allow you to bring in banks you've maybe downloaded from the ASM web page or third party banks. When you click the button, you need to navigate to the file you want to import and select it. To find the file that you've imported, click on your file navigator, look under Packs, and you'll see that bank right there. The banks you create are going to be found in your Documents folder. It's going to be under a file called ASM Hydrosynth Backup, which will have backup files, and then your patch banks. The packs are going to be files that, you, that come with it, either the factory banks or files that you import, and then your user banks. The Backup and Restore Unit functions are designed to allow you to backup all the patches in your Hydrosynth into one file, and subsequently restore or load them all back into the Hydrosynth. This is great to do before a firmware update, or for someone who's a touring musician who may have to load all their sounds into a rental unit. These functions are not meant for library organization and building out banks. You cannot access individual patches or banks within these backup files. They are meant for a complete backup and a complete restore only. Clicking on Restore, it's going to tell you it will replace all your sounds on the Hydrosynth. That's going to wipe everything. They will be gone forever. That's why there's this warning triangle. Warning triangle means warning. The backup button does just what it says. It will get all of the files from the connected Hydrosynth, download them, place them into a backup file. When you click on it, it allows you to name the file. Then it will start transferring all of the patches into that file. It's going to take a little while. On a deluxe, it will take quite a bit. The mode selector allows you to choose single or multi banks. Now you're only going to be able to select multi banks on a Hydrosynth Deluxe. The single mode works for the deluxe as well as the original 49, the desktop, and the explorer. The refresh button will update all the screens and make sure that the patches that are in the Hydrosynth match the ones displayed. You only need to do this if you've disconnected the Hydrosynth, connected a different unit, or let's say you've edited a patch on the Hydrosynth or made a new one, and it's not showing up here. So in my bank F here, I've been editing, creating a new patch. So I go refresh, and it shows my new patch Llama Love just showed up right here. And now I can make sure that my current bank on my computer backs up Llama Love as well. So now we've got Llama Love on the computer, as well as the latest here. So we've talked about it a little bit already, but this is the main interface. The main interface part of the screen shows you two identical sections. At the top of the screen, you're going to find an icon of a computer or a synth. These will select whether you're going to be accessing a file on your computer or looking at patches on the Hydrosynth the active device will be shown in orange. When you click on the Hydrosynth icon, you'll see a window that pops up showing that it's retrieving the data from the Hydrosynth. So the file name or bank on the Hydrosynth will be shown on the line to the right. If you click on it, you're going to see all the banks. In this case, bank A through H, and then the single multis. Or you're going to see your files on your computer. And this will be the packs which are all the factory sounds that do come with the software, or your user banks that you've created yourself. You can navigate to any of these files and load them in the left or the right interface. You can even load the same exact files in the left or right interface. The Reveal button will show you where the currently selected file is on your hard drive.
To move patches around, you just click on the name and drag it to a new location. You can move patches within a single bank, or you can move them between two different banks. Dragging patches to another patch location within the same window will not overwrite the destination patch. It's just going to swap locations. So in this case, we'll see that we've got uh, Breath of Life is number 42, and uh, Big Chungus is number 24. If I grab Big Chungus and move it to Breath of Life, Big Chungus moves to 42, Breath of Life goes to 24. It's not writing over the files, it's just moving the locations or swapping them. However, if I move them from one window to the other, so we take Big Chungus and we put it on Digital Crickets, you'll see that Big Chungus has now replaced Digital Crickets. It is gone, it cannot be brought back. So again, drag from one window to another, it's gonna overwrite the patch. Drag it within the window, it's just going to swap it. To select patches, you have the standard functions of selecting patches. To select a single patch, just click on it. To select a range of patches, click on the first patch, hold down your shift button, click on the last patch in the range. Now you can take that whole range and move them around. So you want to select a bunch of patches that are not in a series. Click on the first patch, select it, press down your command key on your Mac, and just start picking and choosing which patches you want. Now you can drag the patches anywhere you choose, and we'll place them in order. If you're dragging multiple patches, the place you drag them to and release the mouse button on is going to be the first place where they go. The others will be placed sequentially after that. Let's go on and delete those. Select them all. So I selected the first one, hold down my shift key, select them all, and hit delete. So let's look at some use cases. Okay, let's say that we want to create a bank of our favorite sounds. So one thing I might do is create a new single bank. We're going to use my, my great new bank here. Once again, this is on the computer. And so I've got my files here on my, uh, on my Hydrosynth. And so we're in Bank A, and we've decided, yes, we really love Noble Bell. We want that. Let's just drag it over. We love VHS Stream. That's a great sound. I love that one. Um, we need to have that synth brass sound. We have to have our suitcase sound. And you just start picking and choosing the ones that you like and drag them into this new bank. Now maybe I'm going to replace all my factory sounds with an init bank. So there is an init bank that comes with the software when you install it, just single init bank. So I'm gonna select all of the patches in the bank. I select the first one, I hold shift, I go down to the last one, I get them all, and I'm dragging them all into the Hydrosynth. And you can watch it as it's writing over all the internal patches. And now my bank A is all init sounds. Get rid of those factory sounds, because as everybody on the internet says, oh, factory sounds are horrible. So if you decided this is a big mistake, why I really have to have those factory sounds back, you can always do that, because they come with the software. So we go get our factory A bank, and we go to select them all. Select the first one, select the last one, holding shift, and we drag them all back into the Hydrosynth. And now we're restoring all of our factory presets back to where they were. Don't ever get into the idea that, oh no, I can't lose these factory presets. I need more memory. You got a lot of memory here. Feel free to move them in, move them out, create some init banks, pick and choose the sounds you like. One thing I like to do is I like to create a patch with settings that I like. They may be some of my voice mode settings, they may be filter tracking, oscillator levels, different macros that I use a lot, different uh, mod matrix things that I use a lot. And I like to create my own init. And so one thing that you can do is create your own init bank after you've made the patch you like. So we'll go on in here and uh, my new init bank. 
recreate that. We're going to load up my new init bank. And it's got nothing in it. Let's say we've created our init sound here. All we have to do is copy it, select the first, hold shift, select the last, and hit paste. And now we've got a bank of all of our init sounds. So that's great when you want to clear out factory presets, create your starting points that you want to work with. Now you've got an init bank on your computer that you can always just drag over and fill the machine up with. Having these starting points allows you to get through sound design a little quicker, especially if you're using similar macros all the time. We're going to create a live set. So let's go create a bank and let's go call it live set. And this time I'm going to open it on this side just because I can. And so now I'm going to go pick up a bunch of the sounds that I've created here. I've created a bunch of sounds in Bank F, and I'm going to do a live ambient set with puppetry. So I'm going to pick and choose a bunch of my favorite sounds in the order that I want to use them, and I'm going to drag them over here. And so now I've created this live set, and then I've got to have my Prophet uh, 5 patch 12, and I've got to have Big Chungus. And I'm going to have my PPG sounds. And I'm going to drag them over here. So now I've created a live set. And the good thing about the live set is I can always go and grab, oh no, these three songs, these three songs, we're going to put that at the beginning of the set. And I move them up there and it's just swap locations again. So now I can move my set around and change it and reorganize it. And then I can always just go drag them into whatever bank I want to drag them into. In this case, we're going to drag them back into bank A so that when the Machine powers up. I've got my set. I hope this video explains how to move files around, uh, how to create your own banks. I hope that you can understand things better now and see that it's really pretty easy. There's not a lot of defined rules about how you move things and where you move things to and from. Uh, the main rules are if you move from one window to the other, you're going to write over a patch. If you move it within the, the bank, it's just going to swap the patches around. That's it. Take care.